Hello, Jester's Court, and welcome back. My uh, my cohort, Kopi, and I are back for another exciting round of nominees for one of our High School Jester's Awards going into the summer of 2020, our 11th season. Today, we're talking about what has got to be the most prestigious award that we offer at the end of every school year. We're talking, of course, of the Most Valuable Performer Award, MVP. So, Kopi. This is one that we are always excited about every year. We're always arguing over who deserves to be in this conversation. And I have to ask, though, it all begins with what exactly is an MVP to you in our league? Uh, so you're, you're right. Every year this is such a battle and debate. And the amount of coaches that I see conversate and talk about who and where and what. And then the process of how they get there. Uh, and how, the process of even evaluating them to put them in this category is so hard. And sometimes because we have a league of a thousand students and um, I mean how many shows they're in, what games yeah. they play, how they play them. Um, everyone has a bad game and a bad show, right? right. We have to evaluate that versus uh, uh, their overall scope of what they did during a year. Um, this is so difficult and so prestigious, and I hope anyone who watched that all-decade MVP shows really understands how good those MVPs really, really were. Yeah. Um, now, those those were just the kids that won. Pretend if that all-decade MVP show also included the people who were nominated. Yeah. Just who was even in the category. Um and even talking last year's nominees, when I think about that group of six, my head just kind of goes, wow. Yeah, last, last year's six nominees, I want, can, let's talk about all of them running down and, and what embodied an MVP in each one. I mean, we had uh, Noah. Uh, you had Noah. Um, you had Noah. You had Maya. You had Emmy. Uh, you had Seth. You had uh, Haley Reno. And you had Miley. Um, and, I, and I think about those six, I mean, if the six of them could be in a team together, oh, oh my God, or, yeah. or a three versus three show, yeah. how fun that would be, um, just comparing to what that all-decade MVP show was. Yeah. Yes, MVPs undisputedly have a huge impact on our league, especially when you look back at the impact Miley, last year's MVP, has had on this year. I mean, these are really, really powerful people who go up there and earn these awards. So I talk on that a bit. I don't know if anyone has more like accolades behind their performing career than Miley had. Mm. I mean, all the way from winning MVP in her senior year to just even simply being a four-year player. Yeah. Because there are not that many four-year players. No. Um, so Miley kind of did it all. And it, it if there's ever a better embodiment that Miley as an example of what an MVP should be, uh, I couldn't have asked for a better one. And, and I don't know if, if these six nominees for this year know Miley or got to see her perform or worked with her. I don't know if they all had that opportunity. Yeah. Um, and each year that's kind of what's gonna happen. So whoever wins this year, hopefully next year's group will be able to look at them and, and use them as an example moving forward. Um, I mean, Greeny, our first ever MVP. Yeah. For those of you that have never seen Greeny or didn't get to come to that MVP show, wow. Yeah. Um, or Brad or Danny or the, just the list of, of MVPs, Sam Elton. Um, that, that 10 year anniversary show, I mean, sorry, this is very candid. I'm just looking back on it and remembering how unbelievably entertaining it was. And it's super heartwarming to see all of them come together and still be able to create. Fun comedy, uh, just right off the top. And Miley has done so many things for us. I mean, the work she's done at Cheyenne as a coach. Yeah, now crossing over into coaching. Uh, it, it, she's this gift that keeps on giving. So yeah. it's kind of this, it's an awesome, awesome thing. This whole list of MVPs have been a, a true blessing for the league. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of my favorite coaches in the league, if I, one last candidate, is, uh, is Isaac. Coach Isaac at Silverado. It adopted a really interesting school with a really interesting team and has done an amazing job leading his style. Mm -hmm. And that's what's awesome about all of these MVPs is they know their style and they are totally okay with stomping it out in the world. Kobe, we need to understand as clearly as possible, what does it take to be considered an MVP in our league? Okay. 
I think the criteria is much larger and bigger than all of our other awards. Yeah. So the level of performance is huge. So your ability to perform improv as a performance and to be able to do the improv mm -hmm. because those two things don't always go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when we're focusing on yes anding and the next part of the story and the who, what, where, when, why, how. Right. But then also turning to the audience and giving ourselves as a performer and actually being able to perform. Um, there's those things. Also, there's the good teammate side of it, being able to lift those around you. Yes. Uh, and MVP has to be able to elevate their team, and their team has to be um, recognizably better based on what they can do for their team. Um, attitude. Uh, um, every everything that you think a performer should and and needs to be is what the nominee for MVP is, is. Poise, passion, personality, perseverance, physicality, other P words. <laughs> these are important qualities it, of an MVP. It's undeniable that these nominees deserve to be on this list. And they have a huge impact on the league. So let's hear, at long last, our six nominees for the 2019-2020 11th season of High School Jesters. Your nominees for the Most Valuable Performer begin with... Well, remember, you all know the nominees right now, but Warren and Song don't. So uh, they are learning it in real time because we filmed these videos prior to. So they are sworn to secrecy until the nominees come out. Begins with... Uh, from Durango. Okay. Emmy Robinson. That's right! <laughs> and Emmy, uh, <laughs> that's a different Robinson. Um, so, Emmy comes in on her second nomination. Uh, the, not the first time we've had two, uh, uh, someone with two MVP nominations before. No. Um, which shows you the caliber of how strong of a performer Emmy is. Mm -hmm. uh, Emmy's had an effect on the All Stars, the main stage, uh, the main stage casts, uh, and just her performances from day one this year. Uh, I think all I think eyes were on her this year. Sure. Because she was nominated last year. Uh, and I don't think she disappointed. A um, lot of lot of hope in what uh, Emmy's doing. I'd like, and I'm going to talk about this too. Um, overall, as far as a ranking, there there is a ranking of teams based on your scores you got because every show is judged this year. And Durango was always in the top four, and Emmy has to be a part of that. Yeah. So Durango was always in the top four based on their scores. Emmy has a poise about her performance that I think is just so cool hand Luke. Like it's so much fun to watch her piece together her best decision in what she's gonna do. And I actually, I mean, I wanna say I use you as an example with my students. When I teach the game Dime Store Novel, I always look back to when you performed it where you started the scene walking into a room where a dusty the typewriter was resting under a cloth and I saw everything you created as you walked around the table and then removed the cloth and finally had a seat and got started. The beginning of that scene took 30 seconds, which on stage feels like an eternity when you're moving at that pace. And I have to say, it's that poise that makes Emmy really save me. She is one of the best performers she, in our league. She, well, the kind. Absolutely. She's a star. And she makes every small thing look great. So good for you. Congrats. And Kopi, our second nominee for this year's MVP award. Uh, from Sunrise, ah! a senior. Yeah! Uh, Luis Vasquez. Yeah, buddy! Uh, I don't know where I got that from. I'm sorry. But I love Luis. I'm so excited for him. One of the funniest kids in the league. We've been saying it since we met him. And it just, he, he cracks me up. He, he cracks everybody up. And mm -hmm. somewhere around in the world last year, he started to take this really seriously yeah. and Turned a corner, really sure. wanted this and uh, as far as helping his team and, and as far as the comment I made earlier about we have to evaluate good games versus bad games and shows and the overall scope, I mean even in a bad scene Luis can make it memorable. Yeah, he can make it fun. And, and we've all been there man, I've been in so many bad scenes and so many bad shows yeah. and I've done it just, there's Luis has this magic of what he can pull out of that scene. And this year was definitely his year, uh, even despite the Cinderella year they had last year. 
There's something fun about Luis, and for me, he strikes a personal chord because I worked with Luis back when he was an 8th grader, back in the After School's All-Stars program. Um, I worked with him and Dion and Ronnie, um, a big group of that Sunrise Mountain Corps that's made that team into what it is now. It's an honor to have gotten to work with him, but I'll tell you, back when he was an 8th grader, Luis didn't want to listen to pretty much anything. To see him grow into someone who's proud of what he's doing, who's intelligently making these great decisions that everybody can play off of, to elevate the whole stage around him. I think it's... Congratulations, buddy. This is huge, and I'm so, so proud of you. That has definitely changed. He now listens. I remember that exact same thought when yeah. he was younger. I, I do. So He's an epic personality. Uh, he's got a self-awareness about his comedy that I think is really great because he can always stop what he's doing, step outside of the scene, and pop a little joke there, aware of what's going on. And the audience is like, yeah, you're right. That's what we're thinking right now. And that's he just does that better than almost anyone else in the, in, in, in the league right now. So yeah, congrats on you, kid. I'm super, super stoked for you. Our third nominee is going to be a doozy with these first two. Who um, are we speaking of now? Also from Durango, Maya Swift. Yeah, congratulations, Maya, on her third nomination. This makes her our first three-time MVP nominee. Uh, Maya, Maya has not stopped or looked back from day one. Um, I, I remember um, her first practice and knowing how special she could be. Mm -hmm. um, and she was a soccer player at the time, so her, her schedule commitment in the first part of the year was tough. And uh, I remember trying to take an extra effort with Coach Karina and with Maya just to say, hey, let's give her a little extra attention just to get her up to speed on things. And she's never looked back. Um, what, she, what she also does for that team, uh, that Durango team, and how strong that they've been. Um, remember, Durango's not been below the... the ranked fourth this year based on judging scores mm -hmm. and yes emmy is the yin to maya's yang yep. um but now we're also looking at the rest of that durango team sure and what they offer mm -hmm. um because you can have two good pieces but there's still a big team there you got still you got you got to have a team and what maya has done i i remember first meeting maya and thinking that is the future tears up i see that was my thought because of their style and how they perform and I remember the day I got to introduce Maya to Tirza, it was a happy day for me. I was like, oh, thank goodness. Like, maybe they can collaborate and put their brains together. So Maya is our third nominee. She's an amazing creator. Uh, she lays the groundwork for almost everything Durango does, and she knows when to stop and find the funny in a moment and not necessarily push. But when the team needs it, she's the one who's going to progress the scene. And... Who the heck doesn't want a team player like that? So if, she makes everybody better. If you want to, if you want to know what patience looks like in a scene, watch Maya do a scene. Yeah, she finds the moment to make it work, and sometimes it takes a while. And it's that comfort on stage that really shines through. So congratulations, Maya! Your third nomination, first all time that we've had one of those. That's unprecedented. You are unprecedented. So our fourth nominee. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone in the league would be surprised by this, but from Cimarron, Donovan, Donovan DeVito. DeVito. Yep. yep. I didn't know his last name, but I knew Donovan was coming. <laughs> cool. What makes Cim what makes Donovan still the figurehead for that Cimarron team? Uh, I, I don't know if there's anything Donovan can't do. Yeah. Um, I remember one time last year pulling Donovan to the side to give him one note. Um, and, and I think he figured that note out. Um, Donovan's almost Donovan has crossed so many barriers as a performer to where he's gone from good to knowing he's good to getting cocky about being good mm. and then to being great. Interesting. Um, and and this year was absolutely his year. Uh, I, Donovan could Donovan can put on an MVP show. Sick. Um, he had an amazing year. Absolutely deserves it. May I include a question that you may choose to cut later? Yes. Donovan was last year's, he's right on that bubble of the nominees, right? We were arguing for quite some time on Donovan's inclusion um, for reasons I think you alluded to, yep. knowing that you're good. Congratulations on crossing the bridge from knowing that you're good 
to finding that humility to find the ways you can get great. That's the hardest thing. He's, uh, he's a scientist, man. He can he can mix it up and do it. So he can do anything. The Improv Wizard. Donovan from Cimarron, congratulations on your second nomination. This is pretty awesome. Uh, some familiar faces, some Te not so familiar faces. Technically first MVP nomination, but yes. Technically? Really? Yeah, yep. He didn't get it last year? He, he, was, he was number seven on the list of six. I didn't remember that he got left off. I thought he was on the list. He was, he was number seven. Well, in my heart, you should have been nominated last year, but <laughs> I guess others thought other stuff. Okay. Some familiar faces, some not so familiar faces. Who is our fifth nominee for MVP? From Sierra Vista, <gasps> Misha Provencher. <laughs> Um, I, 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 Misha was another one, kind of like Maya, from, from her first scene, I, I knew what she could do, uh, and, and how special she was as a performer. This is crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I finally got the chance to, to give her some of those thoughts and feelings this year, and, and see what she could do with it, mm -hmm. uh, and boy did she kind of grip, you know, Grit, grit her teeth and 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 try and sink them into some doing some work. Mm -hmm. um, she she is a scene conductor and Sierra mm -hmm. Vista. I don't know if the whole league realizes just how strong they've quietly been all year. Right. Um, Sierra Vista has been top ten ranked all year and uh, I think they finished the league fourth in ranking. Um, and how can you not say that Misha is a big key in that? They've got so many pieces with Viv and, and Dez and, and, and um, these new, newer kids. Even Mina had a really good year for them. Mm -hmm. So they, they had such a good team, but you need someone who can help drive the train yes. as, as far as in a scene. And that's exactly what Misha does every time. This is a student I get to talk a bit on because I coached her last year. Misha immediately came across to me as the, the team's guiding light. For sure. Now, Dez has great leadership qualities, and Vivian puts in amazing effort, and the rest of that team that has grown around them this year has definitely fostered uh, a lot of the skills that Coach Logan gave to them, and that you may have provided to them as well, and some of the stuff I gave them last year, but Misha always has had her style, her way, her creative uh, flow. I loved how she would come to me with these ideas for characters that she would kind of pre-planned to work on, and have little notes that she would want to add to each one, and I know she's got the brain of an entertainer. So it's great to see her develop to this point already. I'm super proud of you, Misha. Congratulations. What I like especially about Misha making it into the nominees this year is I think she is the one who stands to gain the most from being on this yeah, list. Yeah, that's a good idea. And, yeah. and she is the one who is going to realize that she is now in a new category. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that elevates her and her team and the people around her. Uh, congratulations, you deserve to be here. Thank you for all you've done to keep Sierra Vista's team tight and moving forward, Misha. Uh, as a group, though, I know that school has needed a, um, this kind of year to, 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 to grow someone like Misha to this point. So thank you, all of you. Sierra Vista, I'm super duper proud of you as your former coach. Thank you for being you. And that leads us into our final nomination. Our last one, uh, and maybe the other, the other obvious one, uh, okay. the one that everyone saw coming from Burkhart, Marley Seinlein. Yay! Her first. Yep. That I know. I it, it, talk about if there should be a mascot of the league. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marley should be the mascot. Yeah. I Marley helped me big on that antivirus thing. Yes. And I wish we sh we should have just given all of these videos to Marley to do, um, because she just has such a way about her. Yeah. And in even in scenes, she put in all the work over the summer to be good. She's the reason why Burkhart exists. Uh, wow. She that team is is a different animal when Marley's up there driving, um, and. Wow, what a performer, what what a memorable performer. Uh, her personality alone, uh, mixed on top of her performance, she just figured it out. This was Marley's year. She's supremely intelligent, 
supremely confident, but in a way that isn't overbearing, which is really, really nice to see. She has a shred of, of uh, she does have humility, absolutely, which is great. But she has always been that person who has been ready to be for Burkhardt, which she's been for Burkhardt this year. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like she's been the up-and-comer who's gotten to benefit from people like Seth and Miley in the past to show her how far one can go up there in, while still keeping their team in tow. And it's a beautiful thing, because she does balance it all very, very well. For those of you that are younger and wanting to be in this category, you really want to get an MVP status. Um, I want to tell you about Marley as a freshman. Marley as a freshman, um, her team made it to the championship. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the final four matchup, I believe, uh, one of their performers that was on the team, uh, literally, as I was out on stage doing the clap -a meter uh, fell sick and threw up. Oh, dear. Threw up backstage. And their coach uh, went to the rest of the team and said, okay, Marley, here's your shot. And Marley got to go in and be in that show as a freshman yeah. um, to help lead their team to their championship. Um, so just to show you just an evolution of what, what, where you can go and just how you can grow. Uh, those of you that have seen Marley perform and know Marley, you get it. You know that she deserves yeah. to be on this list. Um, and I want that story to at least serve as some inspiration for those future to end up in this category. I feel like Miley, uh, not Miley, excuse me, but uh, Marley, of all the students that we've, we've been able to highlight in this top six, I think she's the most capable of leading an entire film based off of her performances in an ensemble role, <laughs> like Nutty Professor, you know, where she just wears a fat suit half the film and does three different characters with that. Um, she's, she's got so much range. So congratulations, Marley. And that would actually wrap up all six nominees for this year's Season 11. 2019-2020 High School Jester's Improv League Most Valuable Performer Nominees. You've got to come up with shorter, catchier titles for all this stuff, Kobe. You don't have to say all of that. <laughs> <laughs> we will be back next week with another series of, uh, of, of, of awards. Sorry to get so close to your face. Next week, we talk about 20 students. That's not an exaggeration. 20 students are going to be recognized across two lists of our main stage selection. We'll tell you all about that next week, and thanks guys. We'll see you then.